The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. Even with uncertain economic conditions, Canada's labour market is still hot. Unemployment is running at 4.9%, which in essence is full employment. There are more than one million job vacancies across the country. Some sectors like healthcare and social services are seeing vacancies and demand for workers climb higher and higher. The Immigrant Employment Council of BC develops and promotes solutions for BC employers to attract, hire, and retain immigrant talent that can meet current and future labour force needs. Its employer-focused resources and programs help businesses of all sizes and sectors across BC integrate skilled immigrants into workplaces. Immigrant Employment Council of BC CEO Patrick McKenzie recently attended an international meeting on migration in Berlin. At that meeting, uh, a large group of people who are both elected and public service leaders examined vital policy issues and then they inform migration policy making processes across Europe, North America and Australia. With Canada on track to bring in a record number of immigrants in 2022, Mackenzie says it's worth asking whether economic admissions reflect employer and sector needs, whether immigrants will be set up for success if economic conditions worsen, and how we can make BC the number one destination for the talent we need. I invited Patrick Mackenzie to join me for a conversation that matters about filling staff shortages with high quality talent from around the world. Patrick, welcome. Thank you so much. We do have a challenge here, don't we? We do. We do. We have it right across the board. How did it happen? Like, what, what has happened? Is this new, or is it part of something that has been a trend for decades? Well, it's, it's not new. I mean, we've seen the data for decades. We have. I mean, the demographic data was there. It was very clear. We could see the trend line, uh, where we were going, and an aging population. Um, and then, you know, as history has shown us through all sorts of revolutions, sort of technological revolutions, um, as we see major changes in the economy, we don't actually see fewer jobs, we see more jobs uh, that, that come up. And so with a declining population and a growing economy, it was inevitable that we could end up in a spot like this. So is immigration the magic bullet here? Because we know that we have a declining birth rate. Like in Canada, we don't have replacement birth rate. Yeah. So it's, is immigration going to fill the gap? Uh, and can it do it on its own? Well, it, it's not a silver bullet. Like any complex issue, there is no silver bullet. I mean, it'd be lovely if there was, uh, but, uh, but sadly, no. Uh, is it a part of the solution? Absolutely. And it's a really important part. Uh, we've seen it in BC in the labor market outlooks for, for years and years now, that immigration was a, uh, has been and will continue to be a significant part of the response to labor market needs, but it's not going to be the only one. How do we, though, uh, get this broad mix of talented people in so many different sectors into the jobs that they are, in many ways, or probably even uh, exceed qualifications, but they're not recognized here in BC? I'm thinking of doctors uh, yeah. as a perfect example. Sure. Uh, and, and doctors from the United States face the same challenges as a doctor from France or Israel. Yeah. No, it, it's a huge challenge. I mean, when we talk about barriers to full employment or meaningful employment, however you'd, you'd want to term it, um, we've been talking about them for decades, you know, 50, 60 years. We talk about, you know, the, the non-recognition of foreign credentials. We talk about language barriers. We talk about a lack of Canadian experience. You know, we also talk about a lack of connections in the community, like our networks. That's how, you know, that oftentimes that's how I found my uh, jobs, you know, right back from being a kid right out of university. And, and I'm sure it's been the same for you. Um, I think though we have to be honest about how we have those conversations about the importance of credentials and, and help shape the conversation a bit differently. Uh, doctors, really important. And, and obviously having doctors as a regulated occupation, very important. Mm -hmm. you know, nurses, lawyers, engineers, same thing. But that represents about 20% of the labor market. 80% of the labor market's unregulated. So that takes 
uh, that takes a candidate convincing a hiring manager that they can solve their problem. Mm -hmm. And so if we can help change the conversation for those 80% of the occupations to one of skills and competencies, and what can you tangibly do, uh, I think that will go a very long way to helping solve some of this mismatch that we're seeing and this underemployment that we're seeing in the economy. So how do we convince employers? Uh, I'm going to tell you a story about a fellow who uh, extraordinarily talented within the hospitality sector. Yeah. He came up through his career at the number one hotel in India. Like mm -hmm. the level of service exceeds most hotels around the world. He and his wife immigrated to Canada because they were thinking about their daughter's futures. Yeah. He then went to the top hotels in Vancouver and they all said, but what kind of Canadian experience do you have? And he persevered enough, but he had to convince them to say, okay, uh, you know, hospitality has been a big industry in, in India for mm, 500 years. <laughs> We've innovated in so many ways. How has Canada uh, contributed? But, but he has to be forceful. Yeah. Well, when you're new to a country and you're trying to find your way and so on, how do you make that work? And if we can't yeah. make that work, how do we get him to then send the message back home? Come on over here. This is a great place. Yeah. Well, and, and it is tricky. And, and it's really unfortunate to hear that it would have happened to him in that industry because the tourism and hospitality industry in, in BC in particular, but Canada more broadly, is actually really good at focusing on skills and competencies. You know, yeah. they, have, they have tremendous uh, competency frameworks for occupations and they ladder people up. I mean, oftentimes a GM started out you know, cleaning rooms. Uh, yes. So you see how they work through. Um, and, and so it, it's unfortunate that, that he would have, would have faced that. It takes a lot of effort to help, you know, help industries and help individual employers sort of change the, their thinking around how they do their hiring. And oftentimes they say it's, it's around perceived risk. You know, it's, uh, if you're hiring someone, you're hiring a Canadian born and educated and, and trained individual, there's a perceived risk or there's a level of risk mm -hmm. to, to hiring that individual. So how do we help, and at the Immigrant Employment Council of BC, how do we help reduce that perceived risk down to be the same uh, for an immigrant as it would be for a, a Canadian? And you know, I don't necessarily blame the employers, because you know, uh, if you look at the economy, you know, I think in BC is somewhere between 96, 97% of, uh, of the economy, it's, it's based on small, medium-sized businesses. Mm -hmm. and, and for the most part, really small businesses. Those are employers who don't have an HR team. You know, they don't have sort of these broader, uh, sort of more broad-based resources to be able to navigate candidates that look uh, a little bit different than the norm. Got to get you to hang on for a second while we take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. So... How does a small business in particular, as you say, without an HR department, yeah. say, okay, I want to recruit that kind of uh, talent because I'm having trouble competing in an industry in British Columbia that is gobbling up people, like in my business, for instance, in the film sector. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, where are the other people? Yeah. Uh, they're hard to find. Uh, but I don't have the resources to go out and find them. Do I have to wait for that person to choose to come to Canada and then find me? <laughs> or is there something that I can do to help to motivate that process? No, uh, well, it's both, uh, really. I mean, it, it's it's both. There's a there's a tremendous talent pool that's already here that's underused. You know, an, an immigrant talent pool. I'm not talking about uh, even other segments of the population that are sort of underused in the economy. Um, so. You know, if you're an employer in BC that wants to look for immigrant talent, you say, okay, I'm not finding, I'm not finding the people I need in the traditional places I look. Organizations like mine, we keep, uh, you know, we, we basically, we will keep a repository of immigrants and their skills who are looking for work here in, in BC. So you um, can become that conduit. So we can become that conduit. And there are other organizations like us. We're not the only game in town on this. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, diversity out in, in Surrey, uh, you know, certainly ISS of BC. There's plenty of others that are doing it's a great work as well. So the difference with us is that we focus on what is the employer, like what's their thinking, what do mm -hmm. they need? And so part of the solution for us as well is that we, not only do we want to help the employer understand how they can look at a different sort of talent pool, but we also want to help that talent pool understand how to present themselves to the employer in a way that resonates with the employer. 
So, so yeah. who has the responsibility here to create <coughs> the environment in the workplace that welcomes that person in and, and then lets them ramp up to understanding the culture of the company, the country, yeah. and <laughs> enhancing their skill set. Sure. Well, I mean, I mean, it's a shared responsibility. It's yeah. a, again, wouldn't it be nice if there was just a nice, you know, pat <laughs> answer? When it comes to the company and, and sort of welcoming people into the company and creating an environment where any new employee can thrive, well, well the business owner and then the management team and, and then and ultimately the other colleagues and the other employees, they all have a part to play in that. When it comes to helping people understand Canada, you know, people from, from outside of Canada, understanding what the, what the labor market is like, what it's like to actually work in, uh, in, uh, in the Canadian environment. Uh, and we talked about that lack of Canadian experience and how mm -hmm. that's been a barrier. Um, you know, that's something that we want to help with. So we, we've created a program. It's, a, it's actually funny. We were talking to employers and mentors. Uh, we, we check in regularly with them to see how things are going, how do they like the, the candidates that they're seeing from us, how do they like the, the tools and the programs we offer. And we started hearing a recurring theme around you know, the immigrants who were coming to them, the candidates that were coming to them, weren't quite job ready. Mm -hmm. They had been taking training. Uh, they had been, you know, they had been going to sort of the, the government funded training and privately funded training and you name it, but they were still seeing this unevenness to how job ready folks actually were. And, you know, and what it meant was they weren't being successful either in the interview process or they were getting hired and then they were losing their jobs because mm -hmm. they weren't figuring it out and the company ne didn't necessarily know how to, to figure it out either with them. And so we asked them, we said, well, what are the deal breakers? What makes you say no? Uh, to a candidate, immigrant or Canadian or otherwise, what makes you say no if you either see it or don't see it? And it's funny, when you ask a question, people will answer it. You know? So they told us. And, and, and so it was... Well, share. what were the answers? <laughs> well, it, it, most of it really centered around sort of what we call the soft skills, you know, and it's, it's just, it's around communication. It's about this, ex, you know, expectations and how to, how to sell yourself, sort of the, 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 the marketing of yourself uh, in, uh, in an interview process, uh, how to work with your colleagues, you know, things like punctuality, uh, and, and it's, uh, hierarchy in, uh, you know, the hierarchy in a Canadian workplace is very different than, a, than hierarchy in, in other countries. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, in most cases, it's a lot looser, uh, a lot flatter. You know, here. Here, yeah. yeah. And so what we did is we then pulled together a group of employers, pulled together a, a group of service delivery partners, so other community-based organizations that work directly with immigrants, and we said, okay, we want to build something that meets this need, that, that works for immigrants, that they can understand what an employer wants, but it gets the employer the result that they're looking for so that they'll actually hire them. Because mm -hmm. ultimately the employer is the final gatekeeper, right? And, uh, and so we built this thing, and uh, it's called Ascend, uh, and it's an online program. We launched it just as COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So like the timing was, was perfect. perfect. <laughs> <for this. laughs> it, it, it truly was. Um, it's you know, seven online uh, modules, eight workshops, uh, and, uh, and we have, you know, we have uh, dozens of partners right across the country who are using this now for their immigrant clients. And, uh, and we're seeing some great success with it. We're, we're really happy with how it's turning out. And it's gamified, there's video, we have VPs from banks and CEOs of companies in there talking about, you know, some talking about their immigration journey and how they got to where they are. And others talking about, you know, I'm Canadian born, these are the things that I didn't know, these are the, th these are the challenges I mm -hmm. faced in recognizing your talent uh, and, and kind of helping uh, work through the process. So. This is our second break. We'll be back in a moment. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. Wow. And so, how many people are you working with right now? Like, well, uh, in, well, on the employer side, uh, we have hundreds of employers. It's, you know, there's about 170 sort of employers in BC that we're really engaged with right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but. Overall, let's say we're we're in touch with eight, nine hundred employers in any given year, um, and then you know, say thousand, fifteen hundred, uh, or maybe a bit more immigrants uh, in any given year. So you're, in essence, matchmaking. Well, we're trying to in in, yeah. in some ways, and it's not it's not so much a, a dating service. Well, I guess you, you might yeah. say it in some ways, but you know, we we're just helping people. We're trying to help people understand each other. To, uh, ultimately, it's up to them. Right. Uh, to, to make the move and make the decision, but we want them to understand each other and we don't want there to be this unnecessary confusion mm -hmm. uh, and, and these unnecessary barriers 
to employment. Because ultimately, you know, for Canada to succeed, the people who are here have to succeed. You know, mm -hmm. Canadian immigrant, you know, the temporary resident, they, they ha people have to feel that they're successful. And certainly when it comes to attracting the talent that we want from overseas, we need to have a compelling story. You mentioned that I was in meetings uh, overseas, and uh, what struck me was this common theme across countries, you know, uh, right around the world, that are all facing the same challenge, the mm -hmm. same labor challenge, the same skills challenges, uh, housing, you know, uh, all of it. And so Canada has always been seen as a leader in immigration and, and, and integration, but other countries have been paying attention and they're starting to emulate what we do. So as a country, we have to make sure that we're doing it well so that immigrants have a reason to pick us. Is one of those reasons uh, the fact that when you immigrate to Canada, you have a pretty rapid path to permanent residency and then full citizenship? Because I know there are other countries that need migrant workers, but they don't give that uh, full citizenship component. They segregate people who have come in to work. Yeah. Is this essential, especially if we want to attract the kind of talent that brings their family, their family, their children go to universities here and they continue to grow and as you say and then over time build out networks that um, become fundamentally important to success. Well, you know, it, it, I think you, you've, you've really landed on something very important there, and that's people have to see a future for themselves. Yes. You know? And there are very few of us who thrive in uncertainty. You know, uh, we might do well with it in certain areas in a, for a very short period of time, but you need to give people a sense that they belong. You need to give them the opportunity to belong. You know, and ultimately, the individual is responsible for themselves, they make no mistake, but as, uh, as communities, as society, as governments, um, as organizations like mine, what's our role in, in making sure that people can, can see their way through? And I think that, you know, that having access to permanent residency, very important. Having a clear path to citizenship as well, very important in making this the sort of country that people see a future for themselves, opportunity for themselves. Um, People are going to want to come to Canada. And so I remember at the, you know, at the beginning of COVID, as borders were shutting down and people were complaining about how we were handling COVID as a country, they're saying, well, immigrants are never going to want to come here. And I, I kind of I started to laugh. I said, well, have you ever been anywhere else? Like, it's, mm -hmm. like Canada's a pretty desirable place. Like, the problem is, we know all our own warts. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, but other people are looking inside and saying, man, this place is fantastic. And you know what? They're right. It is fantastic. Um, and People want a piece of that. Yeah. Again, we, you know, historically the American dream has been the platinum standard. Yes. You know? And then recently we've seen a change where Canada is actually, that Canadian dream is what more and more immigrants are saying are their number one choice. Mm -hmm. um, we want to stay there. You know, so how, what kind of responsibility do we all have to appreciating uh, and creating a, a society that says, I respect you? Uh, and if you don't understand something, ask me, I'll help you understand, rather than yelling at you, like, learn, learn what, how to do this or, or that. Yeah. Do we all individually have a responsibility? I'm going to say yes. I mean, I certainly believe that. I'll tell you a, a, a story, actually. It's, it's about two people that I met over the summer, uh, Ukrainians who had come to Canada. They came here before the war, though. They were not part of this, this recent movement. And they landed in another part of the country. And, and I met them independently of each other, but a week apart, funny enough. One here in, in Vancouver and, and one in Victoria. And when I asked them why they were in Vancouver and not, or why they were in Victoria and not the place they landed, because when they landed, they landed with jobs. They landed mm. with jobs. Uh, one of them was given an apartment, a car, and a gas card as well. Wow. And... You know, see the price of gas right now. The gas <laughs> card alone is pretty enticing for a, a lot of people. And I said, well, you were given all this. And I know where you were. It's a lovely part of the country. Um, why didn't you stay? Why would you leave? So they, and it was a, a well-paying job. They yeah. had it there. You know, just driving a truck driver uh, there and driving Uber here now. And I said, well, why did you do this? He said, opportunity. He said, I, I felt there was more opportunity here. Yeah. for my family. And that kind of broke my heart mm. <laughs> to, to hear that. Um, and then the second person, 
uh, that I was talking to, they said they had a job as uh, as a librarian in this in this city. I said I was never part of the. I, I never became sort of part of the fabric. Said the the other colleagues, they would have their conversation. They had sort of their inside jokes. They had all the the inside baseball, uh, as it were. Yeah. Uh, that you have all growing up together in the same area. And I said they never invited me in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so she left. And so if we're not careful, they're not just going to leave the community, they're going to leave the country. And, yes. uh, and as a country, like, let's be selfish about this for a moment. And let's not kid ourselves. We need immigrant labor. You know, we, do. we need immigrant talent. You know, and we need immigrant skills. And so we need right across the spectrum, you know, from low skilled to high skilled. And so if we don't understand our own need, we're probably not going to take responsibility and we're going to do a disservice to ourselves. Third and final break. We'll be right back. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. I, off camera, I told you about uh, uh, former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien at a presentation that he made down here at the China Gate, mm -hmm. talking about how Canada has opened its arms to the people of the world and said, let's build a truly blessed nation. Yeah. But I think that has to be the spirit. That's the way that we see this. The, the only way that Canada is going to realize its full potential is if we look at it as a collaborative experience attracting people from around the world. Yeah. Oh, a a absolutely. And, and you know, I, I, you know, I, I just I loved that when I, when I heard it. Um, because it is true. And, and, and don't get me wrong, you said there, there is under immigrant underemployment. There, uh, there are rising and have been rising incidences of hate crimes and certainly anti-Asian uh, hate crimes that we've seen here on the West Coast in particular. Mm -hmm. But by and large, Canadians are supportive of immigration. Mm -hmm. Like that's not like we, we we certainly need to focus on some of the darker pieces so that we can address them. But Canadians do want immigrants uh, as uh, as a whole, and Canadians are welcoming of, of immigrants. Now, we get our license to do immigration because people believe that immigrants contribute. Mm -hmm. uh, they also believe that we know who's coming over the border. You know, yeah. We know who we're welcoming, and we don't have sort of a, a leaky border, or a, you know, a, a porous border. We're also really lucky in Canada. Just we're blessed by geography. Yes. You know, we can manage our borders well uh, because of the oceans and you know the Arctic yeah. Ocean, and then the United States uh, below yeah. us. Yeah. So, for an employer right now who's saying, "Okay, well, how do I find out more? Where do they go, and what?" would be initial steps. Sure thing. Well, I mean, our website's a great place to start, uh, iecbc.ca, and that's not the insurance company, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, IECB, uh, iecbc.ca uh, is, uh, is a great start. Um, one of the things that we try and do is like we're to, we recognize that this is a really large uh, issue to tackle. So we're not trying to do it on our own. We have partners all across uh, yeah. the country and all across BC. And so what we want to do is to make sure that an employer who comes to us, that we give them the best services that we can. We actually beg, borrow, and steal services from like-minded organizations right across the country uh, as well. We're Collaboration again. Well, well, that's it. We, we're yeah. part of something called the Immigrant Employment Council councils of Canada and so there are 10 of us uh, from coast to coast and we've all said well like we're doing toolkits we're running programs like let's put them all in one spot and yeah. so put them there because somebody in Vernon could probably might be able to benefit from something made in Halifax yeah. and so let's let's do that and, um, and and it's been really helpful and then what we'll do is refer you know if someone comes to us I'm like you know what we're not the right person necessarily yeah. to but we can help you navigate who else is out there who might be able to provide the services that are going to make the difference in your company. Well, yeah. I think it's vitally important. Thanks for coming in and sharing with us. Oh, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Yeah.